Yo, this is Steve Bloom, and you're watching Moana Nui Podcast. We'll be starting soon. Don't go anywhere. Aloha my kako, everyone. Welcome to the Moana Nui podcast. I am so excited. Happy Saturday. Um, today is episode 124. My goodness. Um, I'm, I'm excited to be here today, though. Um, as you guys know, the Moana Nui podcast is your favorite show for our spotlighting, our BIPOC creatives, and providing a space, safe space for their voices. My name is Moana McAdams, and I am the founder and executive producer of the show. I'm also a Hawaii-born writer and author who uses the power of storytelling to inspire cultural self-awareness. Um, some of the things that I've written are Aftermath in the Amazon bestseller, Set Apart and Chosen, um, as well as my own children's book series, The Adventures of Nakoa and Nohea, where I get to capture the joy of adolescents growing up in Hawaii and uplifting Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander cultures. Today, I am truly honored to have an entire panel of top tier creators who have dedicated their passions and talents towards the history and stories of Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander cultures. Guys, we are in a special, we are in for a special treat today. This doesn't happen very often where we have all of these people in one place. So I'm really excited and um, appreciative for them to come on and talk to us about their latest project, Mana Legends, number one, Kamehameha. Um, so let me bring them on. Aloha, okay. aloha. <laughs> okay, we made it. <laughs> we made it, we made it. <laughs> Oh, so how's everybody doing this? I know it's early Saturday morning in Hawaii, so mahalo for, for yeah, coming mahalo. in. We appreciate you having us, Moana, so thank you for that. Yes, yeah, awesome, awesome, <laughs> awesome. So we have um, two or three more people who will be coming on um, shortly. We had a small kind of hiccup. Sorry, we, we us Hawaii people, like, we don't do this whole time change, yeah? So... Um, <laughs> Hours, numbers, what? <laughs> I know. I've been living on the East Coast for 20 <laughs> years and I still get confused. Like, okay, wait, when are we changing? What time is it at home? Yeah. Okay, when can when should I call my mom? You know, all that stuff. So yeah, I'm no I'm not an expert on that. Forget it. It's just <laughs> not happening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so um let's start off our, our chat here today with some intros. Ovai Koinoa, Nohea Mai Oi. You know, tell us your name. Where are you from? The the, the main Hawaii question. Were you in grad? Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right, right. Yes, your role on the project and how you got involved. Um, and we'll start with Chris since you're okay. the founder. Yeah. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Christopher Caraballo. I'm the founder of Mana Comics. Uh, Mana Comics is a local comic book company, self-published, and we've been around since 2014. Uh, initially, when I started the, this company, I decided to make a team of superheroes from Hawaii, something that I've never really seen, but I always envisioned of happening uh, from my days of uh, just loving Avengers, Justice League, Teen Titans books, X-Men. I love that group thing coming together. And I mean, to me, Hawaii is uh, just an untapped resource when it comes to stories and not just uh, stories from ho old Hawaii. We have like just you know, from plantation days, we, you know, you got Chinese people, you got, you know, the Puerto Ricans, the Portuguese, you got such a, a interesting mix of people. Now, how do they get together and make it work? Well, like Amakua in my head sort of just envisioned that as like, this is what it would look like if you got these local people coming together. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that was, that was the whole idea behind uh, Mana Comics. Uh, I think it definitely evolved to the point where I decided Okay, now it's time to go back to some of the to my uh, native roots and touch upon a story that's important and uh, definitely iconic. So it, there's, it's with that comes some pressure, but uh, I just I just thought it was more important to tell the story. Yeah, so that's just me and yes. DJ's up. No, my name is uh, DJ Kavikani. I'm a, a writer and artist from uh, Big Island. 
I've been doing independent comics for about, I don't say, 18 years. Wow. Um, I started off uh, doing web comics. Was, uh, Spy 16 was our first web, was my first web comic, and then moved to independent, um, independent um, comics. And I did uh, a lot of work for, um, was it called Island Tales, the big dog imprints, Island Tales. And then I did a lot of work for Chris. And then I also do my own, uh, I also do my own uh, self-published book, um, Exilian, that I'm going to be bringing on to um, Kickstarter as yes. soon as I can finish everything, yes. which is a lot <laughs> when okay. you do it by yourself. <laughs> we all know that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, where's my team? Where's where, where's the, where's the reinforcements? I need a break. <laughs> no more, no more. Uh, that's awesome. Um Island Tales. That yeah, that was when I, um, you know, when we were originally kind of thinking about starting our own independent comic title. Like I was like, "Where's all the Hawaii ones?" And that was really the only one I could find. Um, and even then, it was it was hard to like it took forever for me to find that. Yeah, um, yeah. And so that's kind of how I started. And then I found Mana Comics, and I was like, "Oh, hallelujah! Somebody else!" You know, like yeah. yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I, one of the favorite, my favorites from Island Tales was um, The King Who Ate Men. And that's the one you did, DJ. That's the um, first one we did. Oh, wow. I didn't know that because yeah. there was like a couple after that. Yeah, the yeah. Owls one. And... Yeah, Battle of the Owls. It did. Um, I can't remember. I, uh, I have them. I just. Oh, the, rain, uh, the Rainbow Maiden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The Owl Puna, the Rainbow Maiden. Yeah. I also did one that never got published was the. Um, Ah oh, man, sorry, blanking. Um, it's all right. Uh, um, but these are all legends, like you know what I mean. These are all legends from, except the King Wade man. The other, the other ones is legend. Uh, I can't hear. It's the um, the big giant Puhi one, the giant eel one. Oh. Um, anyways, yeah, 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 blanking on that one. And then uh, what else did I do? I, uh, um, I did, I did a couple other ones. I can't, I can't remember them right now. Cause they all kind of run together. Um, <laughs> all the stuff we do kind of run together, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and because it's the you know same brain. So in my mind, it's the same universe, but it's different, right. different people that is different publishers going out to. So Chris's stuff and <laughs> no, I didn't know stuff is kind yeah. of, you know it's just me drawing them. So it's yeah. like you know what I mean they're all going kind of. Yeah, DJ's <laughs> nonstop. He's nonstop with that. He's I'm nonstop working, so he's always doing it. So yeah. yes, that's work. <laughs> that's working it. It but, is. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but this project was nuts because I just, you read all of this stuff about Kamehameha and, you know, we, I'll, let me tell you, as, as, you know, when you get that figure, this one figure that you, you, that is beloved by everybody and you read the stories about them and you connect with this, with this idea of this, this person that is, you know, iconic to everybody. But now I had to draw that. You know what I mean? Now I had to draw. I had to bring it all. And there's, and there's not a lot of reference. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's just not a lot of reference. So everything is in word form. You know what I mean? Yes. There's a lot of there's a lot of paintings. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. There's some pencil drawings. You know what I mean? But there's not a lot of um, things that, like especially in, in today's day and age where you can Google search everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's when you Google search anything from Kamehameha, you cannot really find much. You can find the painting, you can find, uh, you know, the statues, but it's not real. It's, as an artist, you, you you need more. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? So you can put that in your brain and then draw and then keep drawing until something good comes out. And I I, I took a long time on this project. I took, And, you know, Chris knows. Frick, but, it, it, it took some time, but see, he did it right because he wanted to ensure that mm -hmm. everything was correct. And DJ went as far as, like, like for instance, if I wrote in the – wrote into the story the script um okay bonfire in the freaking holiday the house and and he and he's like wait a second i don't think it was like that i was saying why but what's wrong with that he goes i don't think it was like a bonfire in the the grass hut it's like yeah it's on grass hut. Then, <laughs> it's like queen nuts so it's the little finer details that he, he yeah. wanted to ensure that to get it right yeah rather than just rush into it when i you know i'm writing kind of any kind because like dj said the references are really little and when i did yeah. my research too like the early part of Kamehameha's life is very um there's very little references as far as writing too so you kind of have to piece it together with what it is and difficult challenging 
And but you got to also remember, like we're doing a comic, we've got limited time to try to do, touch on areas that we felt was important to that story. And I think we did a good job, though. I really, yeah. I knew, um, <laughs> I knew um, when when so once I started emailing on all of the people that to me is the Hawaiian experts. When I started reaching out to them, and they would say, "Okay, I'll get back to you," and then they never got back to me. I was like, yeah. "Okay." <laughs> Yeah. They don't want to need us. They, 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 they don't come forward, DJ. They don't come forward when we yeah, talk. They go, they go, yeah. Yeah. And then they're going to attack. But I'm ready, I ready for fight now. Like, you guys, <laughs> I'm, ready for, I'm ready for fight now. I, I get to come yeah. out and spear. And like, if you guys come at me, I don't care. But when they never come back with anything, I was like, okay, you know what? They don't want that. That's, re- that's the reason why they just, they're not saying ah. that. They don't want nothing. Mm. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So, but so, but then, yeah. um, oh my God, I love this vibe. <laughs> <laughs> so, but then afterwards, I started getting, I started getting into the groove, and I started getting into the flow. But then, this, I tell you, this book is special. I mean, this of all the projects I ever worked on, this one is, this is something special, because it's not just one story inside this story. So I had to literally, I had to start from scratch so many times. I had to read like. Like, so you get, you know, different phases of Kamehameha's life, yeah? Mm-hmm. And the, the, you know, so I had to, my brain had to adjust so many different times. Usually when I get one project is, you know, 22, 24, 30 pages, whatever. And, you know, it's just whatever, you know, the, 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 the characters, are, you know, I usually do the character sketches first and then we go from there, some background sketches and we go from there and I usually just slap them on together and then it comes together in the end but this project i had to keep uh i had to keep shifting you know what i mean because there's different time periods in his life you know mm-hmm. yeah different, yeah that was like, the, that was the, i bet you that was the challenging part because you got yeah. his you know his his you know childhood you got him kind of like teen a little bit and then getting to the full grown warrior status so i can i know that was that transitions must have been challenging right there yeah and then one other challenge was i wanted to um like everybody was on character, you know what I mean? Like there was no throwaway characters. Like if you look at that panel you see right now, you see those guys. Uh, these, I mean, I, I know people that look like this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I know, people, like these are all based on people that I actually know. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay, I cannot just, I cannot, they cannot just be generic. They gotta, like, you know, they gotta be in some, some some kind of way they got to be real you know they, or at least to me you know what i mean at mm-hmm. least to me they got to feel real and they got to mm-hmm. feel like okay like you in hawaii like, you know what i mean yeah. and so yeah so i mean but just uh, was was a good challenge good good challenge oh man yeah it, it, it's it's the challenge too it, i think dj for me and dj too it was that added pressure to to make it as as best as we could we knew that we came in it with the humility with the respect of the project and because we know there's going to be, you know, that 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 group of people, I mean, they're going to love it, but then they're also going to be the ones that want to scrutinize you to death. Yeah. And we want to just ensure, we, of course, we do it right, but we at the same time know we're not going to please everybody. But yeah. keep in mind that this is a comic. Yeah, this is a comic. And there's it for our intention. It's all about intention because we want to ensure yes. that it's something that can grab you, hook you for all the KK out there, hook you into it, get you excited. <laughs> And take that step. It's like a gateway to that next yes. step to, to learn more, yeah. Yeah. to get excited about uh, Hawaiian history and culture. And yes. if we can do that with one KK, that's that's all that matters. We can mic drop it right there and say, "Hey, you can say what you like about what we did, but we took you know a KK who who may have not in 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 the world of uh, touch screens and everything. We managed to do that, and I think DJ and I can be proud that we we were yes. part of that. Yes, I love that. That's that's kind of how I am too. You know, same thing. Like I was worried, like oh, who's gonna say stuff? And yeah, yeah. You trying to like be ready to defend you know, all in, of in it. this in this day and age. They're gonna say something. Oh no, no, cancel, cancel, cancel. Oh no, no, cancel, <laughs> right, cancel. Right, 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 right. You know, it's all about intention. Who 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 are we as people? We're, yeah, we're people that want to do it right. We people want to who uh, want to push the culture forward and share. Yeah, that's who we are, and it, it's gotta be us. Or who's it gonna be? Yeah, right. Who's it gonna be? Yeah, that's what came down for me was, was uh, who if if it wasn't gonna be us, if it wasn't gonna be me, then then who else? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, I better do this. Like I, right. I really better do it, and I better do this right. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, yes, I love it. So, so that um, panel right there, you see that panel right there? 
Yeah. Chris, can you scroll up, show his cup of club. So this one right here, my so my brother-in-law is from um uh Waimea and the Kohala area. So Kapa'o is the town in, in um in Kohala. And you know how that, that name came for be? Is because when Naoli was running, he had uh baby Kamehameha wrapped in that cup of cloth. And he, as he was running, he dropped the cloth. So he dropped that cup of cloth and he had to keep running because he couldn't stop because they was chasing him. Mm -hmm. And so that that where that cup of cloth landed became Kapa Ao. And that's the town in in Kohala that, you know, that is where you get the statue and all of that. You know what I mean? Oh, because everybody else, see, you were saying about little details, Moana. Yeah. He well, picked up on that and he ran with it. So a lot of people who see this visionaries, maybe some will recognize it, but that's yeah. the thought process that DJ put it. That's why he he took a little bit longer, but he was trying to do it right and mm -hmm. add these little details, which I thought was, was just fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I mean, the details are everything. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Especially with art. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, so for those who are like tuning in and watching and like don't even know who Kamehameha is, um, Chris, tell us like why why you chose okay. Kamehameha. I mean, that should be for us who know. I mean, yeah, if he's from well. here. You know he's important. I mean, <laughs> just because of all the different things he did and trying to um, unite this islands. And you, if you can imagine like being born with the pressure of knowing, hey, you're the guy. Right. You're the chosen one, you know. You got to make it. You got to unite the islands. Can you imagine as a little kid, like, growing up like that? Like, holy crap, I got to do that? I mean, I'm expected to do that. Um, a lot of my um, references that I use I mean, came from books, and there's a lot of great books out there. And if I can push people towards that, there's another one. And I know Brooke has this one on his shelf, but uh, yes. Rule Chiefs is a great resource. Um, Amazon, unfortunately, they, they Skype, they yeah, sell an arm and a leg to get it. But there are some really good stories about um, all the different chiefs uh, of the era as it builds up. And like I said, command maybe, maybe not like a whole bunch of what is in here, but what's in here is like, you know, culture and how they, how they thought, how they thought process and everything. So you can pick upon that. But yeah, it's, it's right now in this comic book, it, it takes it from as, you know, that death defying birth that um, right there on that, on that picture. Not only was running from there to when he was raised and when he had to go to start his training to become that warrior. Yeah. Um, too much. I mean, it, the story is immense and it's just, it's right out of a freaking movie, honestly. Yeah. And you yeah. gotta make the decision. Um, we cannot put them all in. I mean, unless we're going to do like a graphic novel or something, we had to choose what parts we felt was, would we could touch upon that would, you know, make that story strong and stand on its own. And I think, like I said, we did a good job. Um, that last, I, I would say, 15 pages. I mean, it's like DJ just went, and he, he, <laughs> he was killing it. I, I, he showed me, like, he 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 held on to it for a long time, yeah? Um, yeah. Pages. Yeah. But when he showed it to me, I, 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 uh, it's like mind blown. Honestly, I was like, this is crazy. Like, all the stuff that I was writing, he took it way past that. So I'm, I'm just, I'm thrilled about this comic. And I know... Like I said, there's going to be so much of you that's going to love it, too. So I'm excited. Yeah, I'm super excited. Like, can and I you can feel that energy. I'm getting a little nuts. I'll, I'll try to get <laughs> but, but seriously, just super, super, um, you know, very pleased and excited about this. And and I know we got people in, 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 the, in the rooms, but um, I just wanted to thank DJ for his, uh, I mean, just all that, uh, the heart he put into this and all that passion. You're gonna feel it when you open these pages. And you yes. flip it. You're, like, you're gonna feel it. I guarantee you that. And it's from somebody that you know lives there, and he feels what's going on. The energy's there. It's mm -hmm. all poured right inside you. And they're gonna call that mana. So it's it's something that I'm I'm just so happy to be partnered with uh, DJ on this project. The the other people that are in the waiting room, equally excited that they decided to help out with us uh, with the variant covers, and and they just was when I approached them. They were just more than um, just willing to uh, to share their artistic talents, and there's, I mean, they've got skills. They they blow me away. Uh, you got, you know, brother Brooke, brother Stephen, even uh, baby sister Mokihana added her her uh, art as well. So um, great all around. That everybody, I just, I can't thank them enough. I know I'm kind of rambling, but seriously, I can't thank everybody who helped put this project to make it happen. It's crazy. The biggest one we ever had, I can guarantee, and probably the biggest one ever I'm gonna have. And I think DJ realized the importance of it too, like to that level. Like this is the biggest one. 
and we, we're going to try oh, yeah. to do it and, and make sure uh, we entertain, uh, bring joy, and to share that history and culture with everybody. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can see how excited I am. I was like, ooh, let me get this one. $200. Let's <laughs> yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, no, as soon as I saw, like, you initially drop, like, come in, come back, I said, say, what, when, when, now, <laughs> when is like, it? I need it now. <laughs> when is it? Yeah, seriously, you, I mean, yeah, through the pages, it just gets better and better, and, and yeah, uh, I, I'm just, cra- and then it's, it's, when you write something like that, uh, like I said, lots of pres- pressure, but, because then also you want to see, like, um, yeah, you got that pressure as, as a young, uh, you know, young boy growing up, knowing yeah. that you are going to be that king that unites it. So, but you're going to have some pushback moments where he's going to be like complaining or either, you know, push yep. against authority. Yep. And you got to see that part because that's the human side, yeah, where people yep. can connect with that. Like, oh, I, I like break the rule a little bit. And, you know, I don't want to do that. But, you know, it's it's hard to do that with such an iconic character because people hold him in such a light. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how people react to um, the times that he does, like, oh, you know, I'm trying to. But then he had such great kumu that. Yeah. really help guide him yeah, yeah. i think yeah. push him like hey come on now you are the guy so we got to keep you on track yeah so no act yeah, that, that was big with me was his two his two teachers yeah and just what they imparted to him you know what i mean because mm-hmm. that's that's how we all brought up you know yeah. just the people that raised us and you know passed down the values to us and then we yeah. passed it down to our kids and all of that yeah, but so that, that was big for me. So uh, I knew Naiole and um, Kekuha Pio. Yeah, the two like father figures for him was yeah. was gonna be like you know pivotal. Such a heavy responsibility for them too. I, I wanted to make that known because can you imagine that too? As someone watching a kid that's supposed to be like you yeah. know the the guy, and yeah. and that's pressure. I mean, I don't know who you have to be, but that's pressure. Yeah. And, yeah. So they're trying to guide him to not just be a king, but be a great one. And then, yeah, Keku Pio wants to train him. You got, I got to make you the best, so I'm going to be hard on you. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I don't want no freaking back talk. I want you to yeah. learn, okay, That because because you're not only representing your, you know, you and yourself, you're representing us, all the lineage of Kumos that came before me. They're yes. All us, so you better not act up. <laughs> yes. No act. No act. <laughs> no act. <laughs> I love it. And also, I love that you um, are incorporating parts of his story that do show his flaws and, you know, like his journey along the way, because um, I don't know if other people feel like this, but as much as I love and respect our Ali'i, there are things that they did. And I'm like, brah. Yeah. If they never do that, like it would have been so much better. Right. So like, but it's an important part of the story, like to know how. You know, it, it, makes them, it, makes them, it makes them human too like yeah. you can relate to that because if i made them like perfection like everything is perfect yeah. in, in their life and it's it by means it was not yeah it was not and they're just like any art is there's just like any other person growing up you're going to have uh times when you're struggling you're going to have times when you're kind of bucking authority a little bit yeah so yeah. you have to show that and although you you understand like oh my god this guy's that kind of character i hope you can forgive me come at me i kind but i gotta give you show that you're gonna have a little bit of you know not tantrum but just a little push against authority and yeah, that's, human 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 element you know yeah form. yeah you have to, you have to put that because it's gonna get just too um documentary i guess you know what i mean i want it to be emotion involved too as yeah. well yeah and i think even um especially when you're creating for like cakey audience it's mm-hmm. important for you to put that too because you don't want to set unrealistic expectations on like yeah. oh yeah you can just go from here yeah, and then you're gonna be great like yeah no. yeah 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 exactly exactly i had to keep that in mind too so it was a challenge oh there goes steven, oh, oh, yeah. lost, steven. <laughs> we gotta have him introduce himself because i was like moana was saying uh we know you by your art and i was a big fan too i'm sure dj as well but if you can help i'll yeah. introduce my name is Stephen Cole Kakara. So um, I live on Molokai right now and I'm born and raised from the Bay Area, California, specifically Mountain View, San Jose, Santa Clara, Silicon Valley area. Oh, um, gotcha. And I went to school out there. I, I had opportunities younger to come out here for school, but my mother was strict on keeping me out there until high school and then you know, I can do what I want after that. So she was super supportive, but 
I've just been a big fan of Herb Carney, my biggest inspiration. And, and I, there's a few like of my top tens artists that inspire me, but I have just, I've been self-taught since about maybe six years old, five. And I had, I was fortunate enough actually to have a neighbor who's, who I played with, but the older sister was in art school like in high school and college while I was about six and seven, eight. So I would see all of her stuff, pick up from her, and then never actually went to uh, art school until about 24, maybe 23. And I was just ready to learn more stuff than I could provide for myself. And then that's mm -hmm. eventually why I came out to Molokai to kind of to dig deeper. You know, I can read Mo'olelos and learn about all this stuff, but if I'm not actually here, it's it's a yeah. whole different perspective and process that I got to go through. So when I immerse myself in my roots, everything kind of just, the light bulbs really just, <laughs> yes. I think you see all the, the, the debates I see right between everything. It really helps to just <clears throat> broaden my perspective coming from, Silicon Valley, and then going down to Molokai and having you went deep, man. all kinds of different. <laughs> yeah, they get more deeper. <laughs> we can go even deeper, bro. <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, I spent two years at the Art Institute of California in Sunnyvale uh, for graphic design. I had a few teachers that worked for Disney and for. Um, big like graphic design clients like baseball teams nfl teams and just guys that have been in the industry for decades and I, at that point i was so hungry for knowledge i just became real close with the teachers i still have a relationship with them still ask questions and um i just really got deep with those guys too and tried to learn anything they could learn from like or Pixar, whatever industry that they were in, really helped out. And besides that, now I'm on Molokai, and I'm just was honored that you hit me up for this job. It was kind of almost like a sign, like, okay, you're doing the right stuff. You just get staying <laughs> on your path. That's funny that so, Steven says uh, that, because I was, I was totally debating. He's going to say no, and I hate you. Right. <laughs> Rejection, because to me, my idea is to bring you on. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> my idea is to bring you and Brooke on. I mean, I was <laughs> too scared. I was, it's not. They're not going to do it. I, I right. Do it. No but, way. Man, I'm telling you, sometimes yeah. you just got to throw the ball and see where it lands. Uh, brother Steven yeah. and brother Brooke was just more than uh, gracious enough to help out. And oh my gosh, yeah, that really uh, touched my heart. And and I guess that shows the importance of of that them too having that passion to keep that uh that culture and history going to, to perpetuate it yeah uh, these these are the guys that do that so i'm, I'm yeah. i was more than happy so, and steven yeah. was actually really helpful for me we went a lot on instagram like the messenger like yeah, i was just yeah. good questions i love it <laughs> <laughs> i was so stuck i was so stuck at so many points and i was like i gotta reach out so i i, I so i talked to you and i talked to brooke i talked to you more though like, but brooke was good he um yeah both of you guys you guys are so helpful because it's like not just just getting the brain going you know what i mean yeah so, nah, i love i love those kind of questions and it's it helps me to refine and remember some of the old, older stuff that i've you know i read about it learn about it but you're not gonna i, I got too many things to think about all day every day i can daydream all i want but <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. so it's, it's good when people i like when people ask me questions and Especially ones I got to dig deep and maybe I can't answer it. And then it makes me search for the answer and come across more things. So it was really, yeah, just I was honored that you came to me for this project and to be a part of like of a collaboration yeah. with different yeah. like-minded yeah. artists in the same field. Yeah, we're all trying it. to push the same. You know, I don't know what singular word to call it, but we're all trying to no. push this new renaissance. <laughs> We're all trying to yeah. in the direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Parallel paths, so it was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it's, I like seeing everybody's covers and all this come together. And 
Yeah. It, yeah, it really was an exciting thing. I, I yeah, you still I, it, it feel like a disbelief kind of thing that when you actually see it in fruition after it, you know, trying to get to that point and then all plays out. So more than grateful for that, most definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, so I think Brooke is still trying to get in. He's he's trying. No. To get in. <laughs> he's like I see. He's like I'm, I'm. I think I'm on the link, but I don't see you guys. And so um, I we'll see. Hopefully he can figure it out. But um, no, you gotta send him this link because I, I um I went. Yeah, I did. Room. Oh, you I did? did. Yeah, oh, I did. Okay. I'm just waiting. Hopefully okay. we good. Um, <laughs> so sorry about that, everybody. But um, hopefully we can get him no on because he's awesome too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Steven, like one of the, one of the projects that you did was, um, Kumo cards. And that's something I found through, I, I can't even remember. It was sometime during the pandemic. And I was like, wow, who's the guy doing the chiefs? Like, cause it was like the art and then in like combination with the stories. Um, and it was just like, I don't know, just like the way, like the, the amount of information that was captured, like there's so much information, you know, that can be yeah. found in all these books, but like capturing like essentially the essence on just like one card. Tell us a little bit about that project. That was really, I'd say it was the most challenging project I worked on recently because not, not the scale or scope of what I was relaying, um, but it was more of having to do all the components together from scratch by myself. So even like the idea was bigger than my clients and he, he was very clear about that. So a lot of things I had to direct and he, he kind of just rode along for the ride and it was, you know, Oh, should I turn left here or turn right? Here's what I'm doing. I'm going to go straight. And it was, I was kind of just constantly getting feedback from him for about 10 months. And actually my son, was in the, the womb the entire time of this project. So I was really racing to get to finish this before he was born so that I could, you know, spend time with him and not worry about all this stuff and really just focus straight on it. And I think I went about two months into his, after he was born before I finished, but it was just, he had so much information and there is a lot out there for one character or one, whatever the job was. And I had, the, I had books, I have a vast library of books I pull from all Hawaiian authors. And if they're not Hawaiian authors, they all have Hawaiian um, references that they pulled. Um, and I, when you look at the back of the card, for instance, there's little symbols and it'll show like what district they're from, what island, who the mm -hmm. parents are, um, what their rank was, P.O. Niao, P.O. Naha, et cetera, et cetera. What their, if they were a warmonger, a strategist, like a pawn, personality traits. And I, we couldn't, if you see the card, it's like size nine font. It's all crammed on there. This, it's, <laughs> it's really tight work, but I still had so much more to put onto it. So I just kept refining, refining and, um, Eventually, I had to make little symbols to explain the other couple pages of info. So I had like a Sharpie. I just drew the little petroglyphs on a paper, took a picture with my phone, email it or airdrop my computer, vector it, clean it up. And then these were, I made like categories. So like if he was, uh, say, an expert in spear throwing and spear dodging, I had a little vector symbol of like three spears uh, and there was a um a key card that showed what each symbol meant so you could go back and forth and it was just super in depth like he had so much to relay on there and i i didn't want to i didn't want to do it like half style 50 percent. i wanted to make sure i put everything i could into this and uh, it took a while, but it, it came out nice. I'm happy with it. There's still some stuff that I'm like, I'm now like a year or two later. I'm like, oh, I would have changed this. Or, you know, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> All the information was pretty good. He had a team of editors that helped me with that. But besides that, I, um, I'm pretty happy with that project. I did the packaging, package design. 
the key card, the olelo, the little references and symbols, I, all the vectors, the writing, the artwork, pencil, ink, color, and all the graphic design. So it was definitely strenuous just in the amount of components in one thing. Like I, I know in, in comic book, comic book industry, there's people who color, people who ink, people who rough, people do like uh, photography for references. There's all kinds of components and it's decentralized. So I was just like, okay, I'm just going to do all of it because <laughs> this guy, he didn't have the budget to hire a bunch of different people. And I, I kind of wanted to just take it all onto myself. And yeah, probably and then so. I, I have this portfolio piece that is, and I have a whole deck, another deck that he, um, he didn't pay for. So that we, we did two decks and he was only able to afford one. So I have a whole nother deck of 12 cards that never got printed and sketches and stuff. So one day I might bust that out and <laughs> NFT that or something. <laughs> but it's on the back burner for right now. But it was uh, as stressful as it was. It was a fun project. It was cool to work on. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I definitely appreciated it. Um, and I, I hope one day that you can um, let those go too. Cause... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Ah, shoot. Brooke's still getting issues. Um, you get in the back. <laughs> what is that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this is. This is another one that DJ did, and he was like, oh, my God, this is going to be one hard one, too. So this was, <laughs> like, the original artwork for, like, this podcast. So, like, I told him, I was like, I want unity of, you know, Islander cultures and also, like, connecting it back to, you know, like, way, way back to the original in peoples of Africa, right? So... I was like, I want Hawaiians in there. I want Fijians in there. Like, oh, I want Africans yeah. in there. And he was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me all of these references. So I was like, yeah, throw all of these references. Why you do this? <laughs> oh, yeah. And so I think, Stephen, when I was going through your artwork, I, one of the ones that you had on Instagram was like, one ocean, one nation, one people. And I was like, that's exact. that was like essentially exactly my vision for like, creating this podcast and like the people that I wanted to have on it. So I, I thought it was really cool when I was doing my research. I was like, oh, this is all kind of like aligned Oy! really nicely. <laughs> all different. Yes. Yeah, the, uh, the Fijian Drua, the Hawaiian one, Tahiti. Yeah, and me and DJ, like we went back and forth on that. Too. Yeah, that was too. Looking for the references for the, con for the canoes. I kept getting all of these Fijian and, you know, just all different, you know, different Polynesian uh, versions of canoes. And I was like, oh, man. And then the, 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 the canoes that I did see, you cannot, like, you know, people taking pictures. So you're only getting the up shot. And I get plenty of down shots in comics. You just, you need a lot of down shots. Yeah, so you like, need I got to. I gotta just make them up then because nobody's taking pictures of their decks. Everybody's yeah. taking pictures of the sales, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh that's why I like um Herb Kane a lot. And yes. if, yeah. you're, if you're familiar with uh, yeah for Peter H. Buck Te Hirangi Roa, he used to be the director for Bishop Museum. Uh I'm not he's he's a Maori prince. <laughs> Yeah, that's some key book right there. Yeah, I get all my um, post-its with everything. <laughs> Got it, yeah. The, oh, my my <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, where's my hat? Where's my hat? <laughs> References. <laughs> oh! <laughs> this is the second one I bought, too, because the first one was all Yeah, this boxes. is my second one, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I've been using this since the very first Island Tales project that I was working on. And that's yeah, why there's the consistency. Her <laughs> is the consistent factor in all of it. And right? Yeah. 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 And we're, and we're lucky because we got all these like, archaeological detailed work and um, drawings. So, for like, if you don't know, can't get the angles for something, I was always told you learn how that thing is built. And you yeah, like, exactly. As yeah. if you learn to build it from from your hands, and that's yep. once you do that, you you can kind of premeditate mm -hmm. a little bit more and see start to see it. And that's yeah. one thing I like about um, 
what is his name? Peter H. Buck, Te Tehirangi Road. He did all these drawings of the weapons, the houses, the house posts, how the canoe panels were woven, like all every, every detail of society that uh, can provide art, like every little aspect of it. It's like crazy, the details. And her kind of would pull from him. So I'm buying, I was find myself buying his books and just going oh. in depth. Herb Connie and like wow, no wonder he had all these details about like little. Oh, I gotta get that then. I gotta go find that. Because, it's uh, you know, I, yeah, I think I have it in the house. It's called Arts and Crafts of Hawaii. Okay, okay. a lot of people, a lot of people turn it down because they it, see, it says the author is Peter H. Buck. Ah, uh, like ah, oh, it's a, written by Holly and a Palangi Pakeha, whatever. And but then when you see it, it's parentheses. It says. Teirangi Hiroa, and he's actually a, a Maori prince, and he's of half Irish and Maori descent, and he served as the director for Bishop Museum until he died, I think, for like 40 years. So he he got the, all the artifacts that they have in the arch archives. He's the one that drew all these, studied right. how they were built, mahioles, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I find it's better when you get outsiders because they actually genuinely yes. interested yeah. in preserving because it's not theirs and yeah. that's actually better for us because we can be partial of what we want to um you know what we want to hold on to yeah but the you know the you know like um there's this guy um what's his name um anyways the the, the foreigners will help us by holding everything you know what i mean uh and they'll they'll just hold on to the truth and it, some truths we just want to let go of and they'll they'll be like no but that's part of it too. You cannot, yeah. you cannot edit that out. You know what I mean? So. You have to. Um, I I'm really into like boxing and martial arts, especially for like just like mental health and physical health and all kinds of reasons. But the psychology of yin and yang is the same as lua. It's the same concept. Mm. So when the base under universal understanding is, you can't have um, one thing existing without the other. Mm -hmm. There's no, you can't have polar opposites without, you can't have good without bad. You can't have, they don't exist without each other. And at the same, at the level, they're the exact same thing, right? Like um, elements, when you gas and smoke, water and fire at high temperatures, it still become a gas. Like, so there's, that's like a universal law. So for me, uh, all of Stuff. Like, I read that stuff. Uh, Holly wrote that. I read all of it. The Hawaiian stuff, John Papa E.E. E. Herpane, and Cook's journals, Vancouver's journals, because a lot of these guys were writing eyewitness accounts. I mean, look at Kalani Opu's cape and his mahiole. That thing was safe for 200 years through like a dozen different owners. And that's now like one of the best preserved pieces we have. So there's a lot of Ike out there eyewitness accounts um even like surrounding cook's death there's journal uh, eyewitness accounts from french sailors british sailors russian sailors american sailors eyewitness accounts from all different Mau uh, big island Ahapua, and different ohanas from those areas so if you get a chance to like find these little snippets and writings and journal entries and you put them all together it's like oh my god <laughs> like i can see the misunderstandings you can see kind of through the bs and you can understand where things were exaggerated or left out or or what was the real raw human things that might have happened so i think like you said pulling from those other sources is super important from exterior outsider um views Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I am so like trying to get Brooke on this thing. Oh, he's in the he's in the wrong one. Okay. It took uh, me a minute because I had to download um Google Chrome. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Safari. <laughs> Man, I have to. Yeah, he's on the he's on a different link. I don't even know how he got that link. Um, hopefully, I can get him to click this one and, and it'll work. Sorry, guys. Yeah, no worries. No problem. I'm like trying to multitask over here. This <laughs> <laughs> is not working. It's not working. Yet. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, so 
let's um I'm gonna go to the group question. So as as preservers, like all of us, I view all of us as preservers of our culture. Um, I'm sure we all get questions about a variety of things or asked to consult or advise on Hawaii related projects. Like I get people all the time like, oh, I wanna make a Hawaiian character. Like, how do I do this? I'm like, oh boy. Um, how do I make it authentic, right? They come with good intentions, but like, yeah. What are some of like the biggest misconceptions you've heard about Hawaiian culture or people or stuff that you've seen perpetuated in media that is just like, oh my God, what are they doing to us? <laughs> oh, I, hate, uh, I hate to answer this question. Where do you start? Uh, okay, well, let me start with um, just what you see on TV. I mean, basically, um, yeah. a lot of the opportunities that when people come to film here, you know, and that type of industry too, they really miss the, the heart of, a, you know, Hawaii is, right? You get the kind of like their version and all the other stuff is kind of like, you know, it's background noise or, you know, we're scenery or whatever that is, mm -hmm. but you don't really get that, that true essence yeah, of what, you know, island culture, island life is. And it's, it's really a shame. And I think maybe there's steps ahead in that direction where they're gonna probably start getting it more right. Because honestly, just, our island culture, our history is, it's, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> can you hear me? Oh, okay. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's okay. It's the damn gremlins. <laughs> it's the internet, internet gremlins. gremlins. Well, I hope I'm not late to my own damn funeral. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not a techie guy, but shoot. Anyway, so it almost fall. You guys need one closing for us. Amen. Come late, you gotta give the closing prayer. No, 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 no. So I told Chris at the beginning that we're probably not gonna be able to fit this in one hour. This is my gang sign. Lose money. Hell yeah, lose money. <laughs> anyway, sorry. No, it's okay. No, it's okay. All good. All good. Um, Where's um, that girl? She never come yet. The other one. Mokihana. No, come no, here, no, school no, girl. Yeah, she can. Yeah, she, 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 um, um, maybe my gremlins and jump on her computer. <laughs> Uh, that's, uh, all right. that's all right. Anyway. But yeah, but so, yeah, so um, um, can you can introduce, introduce yourself, yourself to everybody? To everybody um, tell them, um, a, little tell them a little bit about, like, about where, you're from, where you're from and how you, and got, how involved you got involved in the project. In the project. Uh, aloha, everyone. I'm Brooke uh, Kapukuniahi Parker. Uh, from uh, Born in uh, Oahu, but uh, family ties on uh, Moko Okiave. Um, Mahali yeah. side is the uh, the Parker Ranch uh, in, in Waimea. My great 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 grandfather started that. Um, uh -huh. But we got cut out, of, cut out of the wheel many years ago, so I cannot give any of you guys loans today. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but I've been, I grew up in an environment where my dad was a, uh, a truck driver, but he had plenty of hobbies, big library, and he used to do Hawaiian art. He was in Halinawa in the early 1970s with Rocky Jensen, them, Herb Kane, Joe Momoa's dad, uh, Joe Momoa, uh, Duncan Sito, all those guys. And so as a fifth grader going down to see their shows, left a big impression. Um, like I said, dad did Hawaiian art. Hawaiian style, I just watch him. Never bothered him. And um, yeah. Yeah. used to do a lot of trading with his friends at the museum. He used to bring home some artifacts. But uh, his Hawaiian library became my, my other teacher's. So I really didn't start painting till 2009. Uh -huh. So I'm still learning how to paint. Um, just a disclaimer, the painting behind me was made over 20 years ago. My friend was bringing art in from China. So I said, this Chinese guy, he can paint anything. I said, oh, really? He says, yeah. He gave him one postcard of Kamehameha Takino uh, Oahu, and he painted that for me. So incredible. The guy could paint anything, but he died already. So, but that the other one is mine, me and my sons. But I just wanted to, since we're talking about coming up. So, anyway, I just love Hawaiian history and living in Kalihi now. So, 
The studio is between the living room and the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Brooks, a lot of Crispy in here. Brooks Alley is like a museum. Like, 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 like this whole display. display. You walk in you walk there, in it's, there. Just, it's just it's amazing. Awesome. Amazing. Awesome. 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 Um, um, and I was curious, and I was like, curious, like so I didn't so realize, I didn't realize that, that, you you that you are actually a direct, a direct descendant, descendant to Kamehameha. Um, um, so, so what is your process and approach to, to recreate, recreate, recreating our Ali? Well, a lot of it is uh, when, when there's permission to be asked, I ask, you know, uh, and I try to be as authentic as I can. Um, a lot of times you get critics come and say, oh, how you know it was like that? And I said, oh, I really don't know. And I said, why? You was there. They go, no, yeah, me neither. <laughs> so, 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 just go by the best you can and, you know, try to be respectful. But, you know, I, a lot of people can claim lineage to Kamehameha. He had over 30-something wives. Uh, 27 of them gave him children. But I, I just use that as a... Um, Inspiration, yeah, because I'll get guys come in my paint booth and tell me, oh, brother, it's my ancestor, you know. Go, yeah, right on. Yeah, we did this, 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 and this, you know, we come from that royal line. I go, right on, bro. But what did you do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's not you, bro. That's their accomplishments, yeah. What kind of ancestor are you going to be? Right, right. So I just turn it around and the puff chest come down, you know what I mean? And they kind of a little bit more ha ha ha, yeah. Yeah, Because it's never going to be about me. It's about... Uh, their stories, their accomplishments, their um, positives and negatives. We learn from the negatives, but a lot of that I don't bring forward. I leave it behind because, you know, it wasn't all ice cream and candy back then. It wasn't. <laughs> so, but other than that, I just enjoy telling their stories and I get help and dreams and different things. Uh, other times I'll do a lee and they tell me, oh, how do you know that's how we look like? I said, I didn't know. That's how they came out, but just time and time again. So it's a stewardship that I that I have. It's a stewardship. Yeah. I think we all have, because we all have yeah. different um, talents. And um, we, like uh, Brother Steven over there, he he reaches a certain age group too, yeah. Um, but it's all good. And even that, uh, that, that Wahini, that up at Kamehameha Schools, I mean, yeah. Was, yeah. she did a collab with her friends, one uh, marketing, and the other one, Olelo, man, that's incredible. But that's all the seeds that are planted. Yeah, I'll be going up uh, Monday and Tuesday at Kapalama. I teach the seventh graders uh, perception and uh, expression by taking a uh, maheoli up. So I know the crowds can't see us, but I take this up and um, oh, my God. They, they express it any way they want. Sometimes you see uh, St. Louis Crusaders and different things, even though they're at Kamehameha schools, but it's a good exercise for them, but they enjoy it. They really enjoy it. So, yeah, yeah that's amazing. Yeah, that's One amazing. Of One that of the I things that I love is how you, like you know, like you know your whole you know house, house so well, 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 and you like, and you, like honor all of your, all of your ancestors, 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 you know, through the generations. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Yes, I yes. mean, just just for fun. But it was for me. It's coming at me as uh, lineage. Uh, shoot, stupid. Here, there we go. <laughs> Porgi, yeah, Porgi. <laughs> so it, it, it shows he's the kind. Uh, he's uh, he's a Po'olua chief, right? Oh, make him, so, make him so two fathers, oh, but yeah, that's oh, impossible. Yeah. But uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, there we go. It's good to have. It's good that. to have that. So that's all my art on that too. Yeah. You know, I'm not into controversy. I remember one time I was gonna speak at the Kamehameha statue on Kamehameha Day. And I had a other lady that was there. Um, I, I, I'll leave her anonymous, but she's very famous. And she tells me, don't you dare tell everybody that Kamehameha's true father was Kahikili. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, his true father was Keoua. And I'm just like, well, I wasn't going to talk about it, but uh, <laughs> since you mentioned it, no. His father was Kahikili. Yeah, that's what my dad and everybody told me. That's what Kamehameha Moku said on his deathbed. That was recorded by Kamakao, 
you know, it's just sometimes people, they want a, a claim to fame, so it's got to be this line, yeah? If not, then they're all uh, wannabes, yeah? But I don't I don't like to do that guy. Hey, Mokihana. Mokihana, me, Mokihana, me. That's everybody now. <laughs> Uh, 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 how are you, how are you today? today? I'm good. 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 i am what is what it, is it like, like for you to work, to work with, with Mana Comics on this? Probably one of the most experiences that I have um, had the pleasure to be a part of. And um, working under Chris was definitely, um, I would say it's kind of, um, I don't know. Uh, it was definitely life changing and it gave me a new perspective on my future and what I want to do as a career as an artist. And it definitely inspired me to want to make illustrations and um, animation for children in the future. Um, I had the privilege of being a part of the Kinky Hero Con that was at Sea Life Park and seeing all the kids and even the parents so excited about the comic books coming out was um, definitely the kind of happiness and joy that I want to bring to um, future generations as well. Wow. I was going to give you money, Mokihana, just for talking nice in the beginning, but then you almost put me to tears at the end. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds good. I'll, give you, I'll pay you for that. <laughs> no, I, I think it's beautiful, especially someone who's still, you know, at your age, like you are, you are, you already looking forward to how you can, you know, put your stamp and influence, you know, other Kiki who are coming behind you. So that's, that's beautiful to me. Um, I just, I feel like that is such a critical part of our culture too. Like, it's not only about us, it's about setting the foundation, foundation. for others um, to yeah. come behind us. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically to take, you know, take the torch where the others, like her Connie left it and grab it and just keep on carrying yeah. all the way. And it's so important to look back and say, okay, this is for you guys next. So come up. And Mokihana, I'm just glad I inspired you to do that. Holy moly, I had no idea. I mean, I was putting you through some like drills of arts and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I was building you as like, building you up to try to see if you had that determination to keep going and you did, you blew me away. And so I was secretly prepping you for the uh, the variant cover. I didn't tell you what she was doing, but you just <laughs> did it. I said, oh, by the way, this is gonna be a variant cover for the, and you, I, I think you were just totally shocked, but hey, I, there's you, your hard work just made that happen. So I was just so pleased that it was able, that internship, which, you know, I, I'm just glad that it worked out and um, I inspired you to do something terrific for you. Congrats on that. I just wanted to add to really quickly, Mokihana. Uh, how long have you been up commitment schools? Um, I've been there since grade three. Seven. Did you? Uh, are you at Kapalama? Yes. Yes. Did you guys? Did you? Were you in one of my painting helmet classes a while ago? No, I don't. I don't yeah. Like you see that day. Well, what I notice about Wahini painters or artists, they're a lot deeper than the seven grade young men. Okay, I mean, <laughs> so when they do their helmets, they're like a sweet Maui onion. You have a lot of different layers to your um, your symbolism, your 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 kauna, and that blew me away. I'm serious, and I just wanted to uh, kudos on your cover. You did the ka'e correctly. The Kamehameha statue is not done correctly. Yeah, you cannot wear that thing like that. You can't. The artist, you know, the guy that went sculpt them, he didn't know. I give him one pass, but you did your other kind correctly. So, right on, sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was giving her. I was giving her references. Um, uh, Brother Brad, he 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 does a lot of the acting and stuff. Um, I I, I contacted him via Instagram. And I says, um, I know this sounds kind of weird, but can you like pose, uh, with like one spear or something? And I'm gonna give it references to. And then he's like. I wasn't sure what he was going to say. He actually, uh, you know, he agreed. 
thankfully without the TRO having to be involved. And I, when I explained it was for like Mokihana to use that references, like to do like gesture sketches and to get comfortable with um, creating a her, you know, in my head I already knew it was a version of the of the uh, variant cover, but uh, he was more than gracious to help out too. It's, it's it's good that you know I think a lot of us too share that unity and thinking, uh, yeah, it's we're doing a lot now in our age for that next. And and he was a, it was a perfect example. So yeah, well done with that cover too, Mokihana. Really. Yeah, let's share this. The, some of the variant covers that people can grab on the campaign. Yeah, yeah. So beautiful. Well, well, yeah, so beautiful. It, it really was. I uh, you can just in another. You know, we're talking about commandment stories too. Um, what do you call? It? Brother Stephen was telling me like I I know like um he was saying like commandment. He he had a hard time sometimes growing up. I guess because he I think he had mentioned maybe he was a darker skin color and everybody was like okay well, what's up with this guy over here what kind of does anybody know what kind of other you know races that he was carrying with some uh, rumor to be like from that you know Samoan ancestry or what does anyone really know well we all kind of mix think about it you know what I mean maybe mm. maybe Brooke would know better but no yeah that's correct you, you hear that that lineage but you know that's the Maui lines too yeah if his dad was Kahikili his grandfather was Kekaulike. His his third great grandfather was Piilani. If you go through those Maui lines, but his mama's side was also very uh, very special too. So um, maybe he just liked being out in the sun more. Maybe he's just one of those uh, yeah, guys. That's, that's the thing too. Yeah. We had to, yeah, we had yeah, to yeah. work. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, I learned a lot about skin and I know a lot for instance, there was a famous chief, I think of Maui or Oahu, I can't remember right now, but his name was Puna. And he was famous for the sling stone, but he was light skinned. He, they always referred to him in Olelo as like a very pale or light skinned person. And one of the references they said was, or like an afterthought of that quote or the comment was, he could have been descended from the Spaniards that crash landed on Kauai or whatever in the field. I was, I was thinking, oh, I never heard of that. So I looked it up. And sure enough, there's like a whole galleon that got swept off, off course in the 1500s. And uh, the only survivors was a brother and sister. And the Hawaiians actually took them in. They intermarried. They had children. And so if you can think that these Spaniards intermarried and had children, by the time Kamehameha is born, generations down, you're going to have, there could possibly have been somebody descended from them, but there was as many hairstyles and types that we have, that's how many things they had. And I know that one of the things Kamehameha was made fun of as a child was because he had dark skin. Mm -hmm. He was out, but that's why the kids would make fun of him because the elite weren't allowed to be in the sunlight as much. They always were cloaked in shadow and shade they, because they so broadly, whatever the emotions surrounding that position, it wasn't, um, it wasn't typical for Ali'i to have dark ele ele polo kind skin and that's where they that's what they started saying oh you, you don't know who your father is you could be a child of a slave like the debate about his father still goes on today clearly as brooke has <laughs> as a queen, but for this day. You know, even as a kid and that's what he what troubled him you know I, I have father issues a lot of people have father issues so i try to be the best father i can be to my kids you know, i can imagine with him growing up not knowing who his true father is and it, even if he thought it was kewa or fahikili there's just the fact that there's debate is going to weigh on a child in any time period so i feel like that's what i use to reference his, his skin color and I'll never show him as a light skin because I know as a child he struggled with racial, whatever, uh, stereotypes and stigmas on him. For that color. And as far as like the Hawaiians having different um, racial backgrounds, from what I from what I understood, different whatever um, resources, the Hawaiians were one of the most recent Polynesians, and that's why we were so advanced. They, Hawaiian, nobody in the Polynesian kingdom came out of a, a village, a chiefdom, 
and it's like small village societies into a civilization. That's kind of, they're, they're compared now ancient Hawaiian civilization to the Greeks and the Romans and the Egyptians and how the Incas and the uh, Hawaiians function. It goes super deep. And I feel that Paul was known to have gone to Samoa, Tahiti, even Alaska. Who knows what, what, what about and where, but Hawaiians are a nation. I've of, all the different, a lot of different Polynesian backgrounds. And uh, over time, it just became inherently Hawaiian. Nothing else. It's, you know, like the birds. Look at our birds. They didn't, they weren't born here, but they flew here and they started to adapt over time and evolved into something completely indigenous to this place. If you grow plants, tomatoes, they're gonna, you let them flourish, they're gonna grow indigenous breeds. So I feel that's kind of what the direction uh, Hawaiians came from. That's just my purse. I could be wrong, could be right, whatever, but that's just kind of what I see it going, coming from. Yeah. Uh, one more plug on, on, on Kamehameha's parentage, just so we're all on the same page here. Yeah. Uh, when Kamehameha takes Maui, yeah, Kahikili's in retirement. He's in Waikiki yeah. already. And so uh, Kalani Kupuli, his son, He's not the warrior like his dad. Uh, Maui crumbles fairly quickly. He has an escape plan. Uh, they go to um, they go to Molokai and uh, Kalola, um, the sacred uh, uh, Kahikili sister gets ill, and Kivalao, his daughter Keopolani, uh, is adopted by Kamehameha. He takes her because Kalola dies, and he knows that's Kahikili sister. So Kamehameha sends a black rock and a white rock to Waikiki telling him, so what, what's it going to be? And K Kahikili tells him, when the black kappa covers me, you can come take Oahu. He knew already, but when Kamehameha is born, yeah, Kahikili tells his half-brothers, Kamehameha Yamoka and Kamanava, the twins that are on the coat of arms today, you become his kahu. Someday you'll be fighting against me, but you take care of him because he's the one that's going to fulfill all those prophecies, okay? And so what happens? Kahikili finally dies in Waikiki. Who comes to get his bones? Anybody know? His yeah, twin yeah, brothers, yeah, yeah. Kamehameha Moku and Kamanawa. They come all the way from the big island at night. They come pick up his Eevee and they take it back to the burial caves. Okay. Now, if they weren't closely related and protocol rules the day, the Maui guys, that are on Oahu, when Kamehameha comes, that's not the Oahu chiefs, they're all dead. Yeah, Kahikili wiped them out. When Kahikili dies, his 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 brothers come and get his bones. You think the Maui uh, defenders would allow uh, Kamehameha's uncles to come get the bone if they if they were at war? Of course not, but protocol rules the day. They come get his Eevee, take Kahikili's bones back to the big island and buried in that burial cave. And then Kamehameha comes. And so, if there wasn't parentage stuff there, I don't know, man. You kind of making up your own history. Yeah. So, I got one more thing to add to um, it's, it's, it. Was, it was famous. famous people people that that it really believe, believe, uh, Kamehameha's mother, mother was in the Kahikili's, um, in Kamehameha Nui's court. And she was flirty, like super flirtatious. They had a relationship. They're always seen together, flirting, cruising with Kahikili. So that's, and right after all this happens, she's sent to the big island. So that, that's, for me, that's all I needed to know for confirmation. Everybody can argue all that, but in my heart, I feel that if his mother was on Maui in the court of Kamehameha Nui, having a relationship with Kahikili for almost a year or more, and then goes to the big island and, and has a baby and the uncles are related and you know, all the different protocols surrounding it, like, that's just, I got to weigh, you know, facts. And that's kind of how I feel. And there's probably more facts out of way to it. Um, so, but that's, yeah, everything Brooke is saying, that's basically what we're, we want to get stories out there and people can kind of weigh the facts themselves. And all the people that argue, like, oh, that Kaikili's not his father, it's Kiowa, all this, like, Maybe you do come from that line or whatever, but 
like, here's a story. Here's what happened. Here's this perspective from Maui perspective, Big Island perspective. Weigh it out yourself. And even if it's, you know, we agree to disagree, at least it's out there. And we've, we've put it on a platform for people to visually see it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not one for controversy. Yeah, we, we got enough drama in our lives, and yeah, people are gonna yeah. believe what they want to believe. People come in my booth; they want to argue. I, uh, I'm not for that. You know, I get guys tell me, um, "How do you feel oh, making money oh. off the ancestors?" <laughs> How would you feel if somebody told you that, um, Mokihana? That's a good. That's question. a good question. I know the answer. They're jealous. Yeah, they're jealous. They don't have skills. <laughs> I love your vibe, DJ, all day. Yes. <laughs> We're all storytellers. If if I read something, something and I can't continue reading, reading anymore, anymore because it's it makes me sense 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 I want to tell my story. Like, like, so like, so if somebody, somebody wants to do it, I can support my family and be it. So be it. it. And, and if, if so so that's 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 what, like, I feel Lua and Yin and Yang come. As Pono as you can be, as righteous as your path is, there's always gonna be somebody that's gonna try and like demeanor, disregard, and tear down what you've built. And that's fine. For every one person, there's gonna be a thousand million that see what you're doing because it's truly Pono. It's it's real. You know, there's no there's no white elephant, pink elephant, or white lies in the background or exaggerations. We're just trying to read stories and put them out there. And like Brooke said, like we, it's almost like a stewardship of Kuliana, and we we have dreams of these things. Like we, we think about it so much. It's on our mind. Like I daydream about this stuff, and when I see certain faces in the community, immediately I'm like, oh, that that would be a good face for Kivalao, or that would be a good person for Kikaulike, or I can see. And it's not everybody, like I, but there's just things that trigger these daydreams and things that I've read. And I think the only way for us to function in today's society is to clear our mind. If we're constantly seeing these things, gotta draw it. And other people wanna see it too because they can't see it. And this is like the gift of sight or whatever that we have to visually, other people can be, like wow just as in our our way of, as us and i think that's what it's awesome to see everybody's collaboration come together and and do that and like mokihana said there's being inspired and all the ideas like i have so many ideas but i can't even imagine what other ideas collectively all you guys have as a cumulative source like imagine all of us what we could have or others we would inspire like there's Artists on Molokai that will never go to art school or never believe in themselves. And I see them as better than me at some stuff, but it's because I, it's not a real job. It's not a real hobby. You can't make real money. Like, no, it's a 26 billion annual industry. Like you can make money off of it. Everything you buy, see, watch, and read has artwork on it. And writing is a form of art. Athletics is art. Art, art is everywhere. So it's what makes our society. You can go back to a thousand years. You can go back to Mesopotamia and Sumeria. Art is what really moved and made people believe in religion and protocol and laws and all this stuff. So it's, um, yeah, it's it's crazy, it's deep, but it's awesome to see everybody planting the seeds. And So I'm looking on uh, basically what um, Brooke, how he was sharing, sharing with you, even a guy with his status of, and Stephen, People still approach you and say, oh, you know, why you do that? Why you do this? It should be that. It should be that. You got to prepare yourself mentally. You got to get that. You got to get that. You got to remember your own heart. Your own intention. Your own intention. And if you recognize it and you all the other noise on your side, got it down. And that's why I reply this way. I said, well, I don't look at it that way, sir. Because getting offended is a choice. Nobody can make you mad, right? That's a choice. Yeah, yeah. So I reply, I say, well, sir, I look at it this way. If I had a great grandson taking care of my great, great grandchildren by painting my pictures and helping my name and memory stay alive, why not me? I love them. And I know they love me too. Yeah. And it's not what the book says a lot of times. 
it's from stories passed on from my great great grandfather. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. It could be a little slighted because of those, because we're all going to have our own point of views. But nevertheless, how do you take care of your family, sir? Then he's different. Have a nice day. Take that dark cloud with you when you get out of my boot. Yeah. Get out. Beat it. Yeah. I don't say that, but you know. So I saw you got to do them, you know. Yeah. yeah. There's no, there's no, no, there's no Some guys I'll just say, I won't even entertain, I won't even dignify your existence with an answer to that ridiculous question. Like sometimes it gets really bad, but you just gotta, like you said, you have answers. And I, I try to like premeditate things that people will say from things they have said. And I just keep you digging. We're ready. ready. For it. <laughs> you'll get you'll get you'll get um feedback too uh, i remember coming in a day and um you know i post a lot on my my facebook and you say well how can you honor a murderer and so i said oh, yeah, okay yeah. One, of, one of those guys i said no i said you gotta remember now yeah i'm talking from uh both sides of the spectrum i had intimate family members at Kauai high i had guys Great great grandpa on the canoe with the Kau guys. Yeah. Uh, Keua. He's losing his life that day. Kuahula, yeah. That's all my Ohana too. On the beach with Kamehameha is Kuakahela was the Kahuna Nui for Keua. Yeah, he was very beloved. It was from his point of view that we get the Kau side of what happened over there that day. Because time is short, I'm not gonna go overboard, but he's the only one that lives on that canoe that Keoua surrounded himself with his companions in death. He did that to save the Ka'u people later. So Ka'u today, they don't celebrate Kamehameha Day. They don't. They, 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 he's not a hero. He's not. And so I understand that. I have a lot of Ka'u family too. But also, how did he survive? Kuakahela, the Kahunun, Kahununui of Keoua survives because he hides in his sister's house that was Close by the bay. Who's his sister? Kikui Apuiva the second. Kamehameha's ma. So you see the intrigue there? On the beach with Kamehameha is Kuakahela's son, Waipa Nui. He's one of the adjutant generals. He sees his dad and his uncles coming in. Now till this day, we know Keamoku started the ruckus, but we don't know if Kamehameha knew if it was planned or it's still a big controversy today. So when you talk about you know, certain slighted uh, points of views, you know, and many of us have families that was on both sides. And so you just take it all in, you allow people to show their emotions like that and their strong feelings. But like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not into drama. And, but you always gotta check yourself because we're at, we're in a business that uh, people are gonna have their, their comments. And I remember doing a favor for one guy, <laughs> traveling early in the morning, we talked to about 80 Hawaiians out in the uh, West End of Oahu and I did the PowerPoint with my um, with my art and my lecturing and I felt it went pretty good we had a good feeling and then all of a sudden at the end I I, I answer questions and a guy in the back says uh, what about all the Hollies in Waikiki stealing the land sort of off topic yeah <laughs> off topic bro I'm not talking about that but I told him well sir I have a lot of friends in the tourist industry that teach Hawaii uh, not Disney or Hollywood style, okay? He says, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about them stealing the land. And then he says, you Honolulu Hawaiians come to down on the west side trying to tell us about our ancestors just because you related to Kamehameha. He says, F you and F your ancestors. You know, I'm looking at my wife. She's praying for me, yeah, because she knows, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm thanking God that it's not 20 years ago. Yeah, bro. You can say F you all you want, but F my ancestors. You and me are going to have a problem, bro. Yeah? Somebody going home drinking soup. Yeah? Not going to be me, bro. Yeah? I'll give you one nice knuckle sandwich for, for breakfast, brother. Yeah? But I just went up to brother. I got on my knee. I said, sir, you, you're choosing to play the victim. I said, I'm talking about honoring the ancestors. And you're talking about Honolulu guys coming? 
He said, no matter what else I say to you today, I'm not going to change your mind. Try and have a nice day. I'm out of here. Bruh. That's from Kanaka Maoli. Yeah. Sometimes they're the worst guys. But like my auntie used to say, putting, putting those guys. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just happy I'm not married to him. You know what I mean? It's a choice. It's a choice. Bruh. I, um, I went to school with a lot of Jewish kids and I had a lot of Jewish friends and a few of them were citizens of Israel. And after we were Paul High School, they had to go back and serve in the Israeli Armed Forces for two years, right? After you're 18, that's mandatory as a citizen of Israel. Of all the World War II history we learned throughout high school and junior high, not once did I hear any of them complain about Hitler or shed a tear or nothing. And then I then I dig more and I find out that they after World War II, they created Krav Maga, which is like the world's top fucking, excuse my French, but it's the top like self-defense system for weapons, guns, knives, etc. modern things. It's this is a martial art that's not thousands of years old. It started in the 1940s. And so like that kind of resilience, are you going to be angry about my ancestors doing this to your ancestors and Captain Cook doing this 200 years ago and things that I had no relevant experience in? Or I put my energy into other things. If I get angry about this, maybe I should go for a run. Maybe I should go hit the punching bag. Maybe I should go draw. You know, so there's when guys come at me like that, which, which they have, and it's actually been recently somebody was like, I was just putting out facts about the, the, the Hawaiian flag, red, yellow, green versus the original flag. And this guy just came and you, you have a birth certificate, all this, like saying all, like all kinds of stuff. And I was just like, you're getting off topic here. You know, like your anger clouds rationale. So if somebody's gonna yell at you, at me for like my ancestors and what Kamehameha did and I'm perpetuating a murder, like what, what about all the warmongers that raised Kamehameha? You know, what about Ke Kaulike? What about like, this is, war was so advanced that it was um, allocated for four months out of the year. No other culture did that. Everybody was just like, you know what? We're gonna build up and this is our plan and we're gonna go. We'll send messages and all that. You couldn't do none of that outside of the four months. And there's some guys that did, but I wouldn't, I, I used, I grew up hating Captain Cook. I hate that guy. I hate Captain Cook. I hate that name. Tear down the statue. And, and I get it. But he's, when you really read, he wasn't the worst. Like he didn't unload. He didn't get all the lions on the first cannons on them. So, and I forget the, the Olelo name of that, whatever he did, but it was basically translated in English as brains and guts in the water because he just had women, old people, children, and, and men come to the side of the ship, load up with canoes, and he just unloaded cannons on them because he was pissed off about some other incident that happened with his son. But you don't hear anybody talking about that. Oh, screw Vancouver and all this. So like, I feel that the cultural trauma anger has become so strong and there's no like broad perspective like screw it you know like i, I honestly wouldn't exist if captain cook and all these explorers didn't come because my haole side is a burrow is burrows so my great 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 grandfather that has english in him was part of the court of he was in the court of the monarchs in the 1800s he got kicked out because he was a belligerent drunk and he was messing around with all the, the women in the court so they exiled him to molokai lao point to cure him of his alcoholism <laughs> like you know like this is am i gonna be mad at these things like i have nothing to do with that i but i gotta recognize for myself i could be an alcoholic all this stuff whatever but this is there's no you can't hold anger over cultural trauma that you, it's gonna blind you from all the real things that are in plain sight. And I feel like that's what's going on a lot today because if there's anger, you know, Red Hill, Mount Hill, all this stuff, it is frustrating, but 
We got crystal meth on my front door. You ain't ever gonna find me on Mauna Kea, leaving my family on the island where meth is like almost a normalcy. We all have battles. We're getting attacked on every front, almost like Ukraine. We have one front that's open, the Western front, and that's where we're going. Like we're pushing our culture out more and more, but it's it's um it's frustrating to see all the frustration taking over, you know. So I had to just realize that don't be angry at Captain Cook, but like, you weren't there. <laughs> you might not exist if if he didn't come out. Maybe your great 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 grandfather wouldn't come out, and if he didn't get exiled to Molokai, he wouldn't have met your great 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 grandmother Koa, and then all of a sudden you exist here in this place. So there's just ways that I try to psychologically turn cultural trauma into progress and productiveness. And I, I feel like it overpowers any negative naysayers that are gonna come at you and say like, F you and F your ancestors. Like, oh, you are at a low spot, bro. I'm sorry for you. Yeah, you know, like so you said, four things. You can definitely see like Steven is saying like, these are the outside sources that can come at us, but it, it comes down to your intention and what your, 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 you know, what's your aloha? What is your drive? What are you trying to do? And you just focus on that, uh, especially like Mokihana coming up. Uh, don't be, don't be wrapped up what other people are thinking. You know what you want, you want to do. You know that it's more important to share these stories, to share um, your gifts. That is where you're at. And I think if you can focus on that, just wash everything away so yeah most definitely yeah. yeah i totally agree with that and i think um i don't think i fully appreciated that until um you know i moved away from the islands right and i think you know because the further you get from a source the the weaker the connection right and so for me it took me a long time to kind of get myself in a position where you know like there's a lot of projects and ideas that I had but I never wanted to do them I mean I was afraid to do them because for this very reason right like what are the people gonna say who's gonna come with that but I finally just got to the place where it was like I know I'm not gonna do it 100% because or 100% correctly because everyone has as stories are told there are different you know perspectives that you know essentially play out yeah. but at my core, like my intention mm -hmm. is to attract people to get yep. them interested. <clears throat> and if if my art is the reason why they go and pick up, you know, books like this yeah. <laughs> or other comics, right? Like I did my job. Like that's what I wanted you to do. I might not be correct, but come, come, let's talk story. Like let's yeah. get a full picture. Let's let's understand. yeah, let's start that conversation. Let's talk yeah. about them again. Because when you talk about them, when you talk about our ancestry, it stirs it up. Mm -hmm. It stirs it up. And I know they're listening. They're like, oh, they, someone's talking about me. Try, try, listen, try listen to what they're saying. They're talking. They get excited. I guarantee you that. So like you said, good intentions will always outweigh all those negative ones. Push that forward in your oh, heart yeah. and just go for it. Yeah. And to like Brooke's point too, like, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, okay, what kind of ancestor are you going to be? You know, like at the end of the day, that, that's like really what I'm asking myself every time I make something, you know, or I'm sitting here and I'm like, what am I going to, like, what is going to be my legacy? What is the impact that I want to leave when Moana is gone? Like, what do I want people to say about Moana and the Hawaiian people and the culture and who we are, you know, like what, what we have contributed to this, this global um, landscape really, because if you study like Hawaiians were everywhere, you know, like yeah. our, our ali'i were traveling all over the world, you know? Um, and there were a lot of advancements that we did that we, we did it before a lot of advanced cultures it. now, right? Like <laughs> it's just so much, so much out there. Yeah. <sighs> but yeah. So anyway, back to, back to Kamehameha. I'm glad you guys are, um, persevering um, and continuing to, you know, bring your own perspectives to this and inviting others to who are willing to engage in a, a constructive manner, right? Like not just focusing on the negative because I know, especially, I think even like in the creative space in and of itself, like it's just so easy for people to like always have something to say, right? Um, but to, to persevere, um, uh, you know, above all of that is, um, is it's tough, um, but I'm glad that we have, you know, a beautiful community of people who are willing to, you know, 
stand on the edge of that cliff, right? And mm -hmm. and like just keep holomua, right? Like let's go imua, you know, mm -hmm. um, and just I don't know. I just I I, I love that, especially as someone. It's so know, important to yeah. continue it, yeah, because it, it it was left there, like I said, from our, our ancestors to those who who tried hard to perpetuate it with their art, with their stories. We, there has to be that next. If there's that, without that next person's coming up, who's it going to be? Uh, and it has to keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So um, I know we, we started like the, the question. So I'm going to continue it because I think it's a good one. <laughs> it's the group question. I'll say it again because I know Mokihana and uh, Brooke came in at the, at, at the end. But uh, uh, the question was, as preservers of our culture, which I believe we all are, um, you know, we get asked about a variety of things, asked to consult on different Hawaii related projects, whatever that might be. What is the biggest misconception about Hawaiian culture or people that you have heard or seen perpetuated in media? Tiki culture. Oh, tiki culture. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Or I call it Blue Hawaii. Uh, or Blue Hawaii. <laughs> Elvis. Yes. Elvis, Elvis discovered Hawaii. <laughs> uh, Mokihana, I would love to hear your perspective. I think definitely I see a lot about um, kind of like tourist touristy things in Hawaii is seen as Hawaiian things mm. out of the state and out of the country. Um, I actually had the privilege of being able to live out of the country. I lived in Germany for a couple years and um, I noticed that most people that um, are out of the country or out of the state, they don't know Hawaiian culture and they don't know what it, what it is. And the first thing that they think of when they think of Hawaii is, um, is tourist, touristy things. And they think of like pineapple on pizza, they think of um, tacky flower, bright shirts and stuff like that. I heard people from New York say they didn't know Hawaiians were even a thing. I thought Hawaii was just a state. I didn't know it was a people, a culture with a language. Right. Things like that. Like what she's saying is on point, not just internationally, but domestically. Yes. And growing up in California, going to high school from kindergarten to um, 12th grade, one paragraph, four inches tall, about two inches wide, a 12 point font about the annexation was all we ever got. But we learned about Gilgamesh. Sumeria, Mesopotamia, the pharaohs, queens, um, England. We learn about African countries, South America. We learn all kinds of stuff. American history. <laughs> Native American, American history, U.S. history, all this stuff. But I was just, Hawaiian history was on my own. I, mean, I had to do all that. I, didn't, I wasn't fortunate enough to be out here for school and learn all these things. And I probably wouldn't have cared if I was at that time. I feel like being away from it was like, the curiosity from seeing all the tourism imagery versus what I knew and was feeling in here was like, I, I had the, they're like polar, they weren't coming together. <laughs> I had to make sense of it. So what Mokihana is saying is, I felt like it was a dangerous thing to our people because say all of us left and went to Germany, German, we're in Deutschland, we're saying even Heifelheim, we're having to learn different like dialects and things. You know, she had to adapt to that place. You can't speak Pigeon or Olelo out there. If she went to Japan, same thing, you learn Japanese words and all this stuff. So it's you have so much bandwidth and energy for things. When you immerse or come out of it, like the curiosity just really it kills me. It really does. And I want to know. And then that's what, like Brooke was saying, the Pono stuff. So it's, yeah, it's crazy to hear that in Germany, they don't know that, but then it's also not crazy. So scary. scary. 
I, I haven't been that well traveled, but I've been I've been different places, and um, some some places I've been people don't like Americans. Um, you know, you can't blame them. You can't blame them sometimes, but but the point is, um, when they find out I'm from Hawaii, that that brings a smile to people's faces, and some of them have have been here, some of them, most of them have not been here, but I pose the question, why is that? Why is that? And I feel it's because of this reason. Yeah, I've been to the Bahamas. They got beautiful beaches. Uh, I've seen beautiful mountains in different parts of the country, and you know, other places have that too. But the beauty of this place is with its people. When people live aloha, and that feeling. And it, it, I'm not talking about Kanaka Maoli. It has nothing to do with blood quantum. Okay, I don't want to get stuck in that because. Um, I have all different nationalities in me, and it's all important. I just happen to live in a place where I choose to depict the host culture. Yeah, that's all. But it's because people try and live aloha. It's because we love and revere our ancestors. And I, and I tell them, uh, my opinion, because of the fact that we, we honor and revere our ancestors so much, even though they're not here physically anymore, they never left spiritually. That's what you fall in love with, that, that feeling of aloha and, and love and a golden rule, treating others how you would be treated and trying to control things that you can control, not worrying about things you have no control over. And just being a good person, that's all. That's aloha. Kind, you know, respectful. Um, you really got to go out of your way to be a jackass. You really do. Yeah, that takes effort, yeah doesn't take any effort to be kind and nice and or if you don't really have anything nice to say just hum out yeah just be quiet that's all yeah people are entitled to your opinions yeah it's okay so anyway it's my two cents <coughs> oh. you muted Mona Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was just saying, uh, anybody else, any last comments on that question? Um, if not, I think we will, let's talk through the campaign a little bit, tell people what they can get on the on the project um, and that kind of stuff. Let's see. Okay, I think I'm uh, the one suited for this these questions. So uh, the campaign kicked off March 1st. Uh, I believe we're encroaching on um, 8K right now. We did fund, fully fund with, uh, I guess within the first 24 hours, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, you'll see, we're, get, we're almost there. Um, Congratulations. Thank you so much for that. I was, that was uh, just, it blew me away. And uh, I can't thank uh, the Manohana enough for just stepping forward and doing it quick. And this has to do with, uh, Moana knows this, there's algorithms involved. When people rush in and help out, it really helps uh, the creators of whatever project because it sort of boots up. I don't know computers, text, that's not my thing, but something happens and it clicks and things start to, uh, they push forward your project. So thank you for that. Yeah, we still have a ways to go. We still have great rewards. It's funny that all the celebrity awards got picked up fast. Uh, yours in, in, uh, included there, Brooke. But uh, uh, Jason Momoa st got snatched up fast. Um, and it wasn't who, a person who I thought it was. <laughs> it, it, was some, it was some dude. <laughs> He goes, I'm not going to tell anybody that I, I got this, but I just love it so much. I'm going to put it on my wall. I was <laughs> like, okay, what a guy. I love this guy. Because I know there was aunties that were, go that were gunning for it. Um, Kelly, you had, I uh, was gracious enough. I was chatting, talking story with her too. Uh, she, you know, come in at grad too, uh, And she put her uh, stamp by helping out with, uh, you know, her her autograph pictures. She has a clothing line too. That way I, I did some, um, uh, what do you call, t-shirts with her too. Totally awesome. Brother Brad did his Night Marcher collection, the Paniola brands of his of his company too. So there was uh, caps and there were shirts and then Brother Steven was uh, totally nice and gracious enough to help out with the, the caps, Kamehameha caps, which are, there's still a lot left for that too. You can put in for that. So not only can you grab the comic and reward that you want, but there's also add-ons. If you want another cover, say, you just add it on at the end. A lot of people don't know that. So they get tied up with trying to look in the rewards, but you can always add something on in the end. So yeah, it's still up there. Um, please go check us out. We want to continue uh, with this. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that we go as far as we can. There's some great 
uh, stretch goals that we have. And stretch goals, for those who don't know, is uh, basically rewards that get unlocked if you hit, hit that certain uh, that certain pledge. It unlocks and everybody gets it. So there's some uh, beautiful artwork that uh, DJ Kiavikani made in that regard with some of the, um, of the main uh, people that are featured in the comic book itself. Um, and I, I, I didn't want to show it any. I'm just going to wait, see if we can get there. And hopefully um, you can be uh, rewarded with that, everybody. So, yeah, I appreciate anyone, everyone who's, um, you know, pledged so far. Continue, please, to just share, share the link, talk about it, say, hey, why are you supporting this book? Um, once again, like I said, it comes down to us trying to perpetuate and trying to just keep the story alive and get the conversation always uh, going about our ancestors. So if you if you if that excites you, if that's what you um, want to do as well, please jump on. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I, I definitely encourage everyone to support this Kickstarter. I've been waiting for this for so long. Um, and I, I, I'm hearing rumblings about Pele. So, you know, you have my money for that too. Yeah, take my money, you know, like all that. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, you unmute. Chris, you got to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Chris, Chris, Chris you got to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> all that, all that. <laughs> well, Pelly's back there. She's watching, so she okay. knows she's next to mine. But um, yeah, that's you know that's a story. These are stories that, um, like I said, um, I want to share it's done right. I want to share it's done respect respectfully and with humility. I don't want to uh, play the, uh, these uh, these people out or and you know the gods like some cartoon characters. You know what I mean? There's importance and respect that's involved with it. Yeah. So knowing that, that's how I move forward with the projects. I don't want to make them look uh, just cheesy and cartoony. I want to make it as real. I know I think Marvel actually going to Pele, they tried it, but it didn't to me. It just didn't, it didn't work. So uh, that version, you know, when I get there, I already know how I want to present her yet in a respectful way. But Kamehameha is, is definitely, it, it was a long journey to get here. Uh, I was so glad, like I said, with all these, uh, these artists who stepped forward, to uh you know put their put their energy and their heart into uh their artwork to help out with this project so i thank them so much mokihana to brooke to steve and to dj all of you guys uh, you guys don't understand how important and and just honored i am to to be working you with you on this and like i said i was chicken i was chicken to ask uh you guys but i am so um i'm glad that i got over that fear and just like i said threw the ball and just took a chance there so thank you for taking that chance with me and i hope Everybody out there uh, goes for it because I know you enjoy it. If you don't, that's okay. Uh, we're going to start one conversation and negative or positive, but it's all good. Our energy we're putting into it. Yes. Yeah. Mahalo Nui to all of you for your contributions on this. Um, and Chris for organizing it all because, you know, I, I know it, it takes, a, it takes a, a village, right? It takes a... <laughs> Well, a whole community. To let me tell you, when the Portuguese the Portuguese is behind the wheel, anything can happen. Anything can happen. So, um, but it's I, I'm just happy that it all worked out, and um, all these pieces that I, I I envisioned could happen came together with with all these uh, wonderful people. That's awesome. All righty. Yeah. So, I'll oh, go ahead, Stephen. No, I said it's a beautiful thing. It is. It really is. Hey, Chris, I'm Portuguese too, bro. Davila <laughs> and Vieira clan from Pico, Pizzo. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Middle island, island, island of Pico. <laughs> yeah. Well, Kahana, do you have any Portuguese? Are you part of the clan? What? Yes, I think so. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> <laughs> Ancestry.com. We're all cousins. <laughs> Madara no, I, Island. I, I don't want Portuguese. Everybody think I get Portuguese. <laughs> I, guess, I guess Spanish. Oh, yes. Oh, That's a good one. Yes, yes, close close enough. enough. They're right off the coast, bro. Right on the bottom. Uh, DJ, 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 same. DJ, same archipelago. <laughs> yeah. oh, I love it. All right, power to the Portuguese. Um, <laughs> so we, we're going on the two hour mark. So let, let's let's uh, let everybody begin their Saturday morning afternoon over there. 
Um, let's go around and tell folks where they can find you online, where they can get some of your art outside of the campaign, uh, and where they can find you on social media. We'll start with DJ since you're on the top. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, DJ Kavikane, or uh, First Watch Studios, Facebook, uh, Facebook, Dwayne Kavikane. Get my you cannot be DJ for some reason on Facebook, which is weird. Um, yeah, I guess that's about it. And then my Kickstarter coming up, hopefully sometime soon. Yeah, that's that's about it. Anna. I actually don't have a professional Instagram for my art or anything yet, but I'm working on it. Chris. Okay, so if you want to uh, learn about the stuff that I've done so far, you can go to monocomics.com, monocomics.com. Uh, we do have, like I said, uh, my first thing was making a superhero team from Hawaii. And that's what I did. So you'll check and you can see all the different descriptions. Please check us out and check out this campaign. Thank you. Mahalo. Right on. Uh, Brooke? Thanks. Am I next? Uh, Hawaiianart.org is our website. And then on um, IG, Facebook, uh, you can find me under my uh, Hawaiian Art also. But uh, my full name, Brooke Kapukuni Ahi Parker. Instagram. Yeah, I said IG, Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> well hello uh steven last but not least uh just look up my full name steven with a ph koa kakayo k-a-k-a-i-o and the best place is either my instagram you can check out my personal uh art profile which is steven.koa.kakayo.art or my my brand kava roots and the Instagram is at Kava underscore Roots, R-O-O-T-S. And I also have a website, KavaRootsintl.com. So you can go on there and check out, like, any past work. I have a couple portfolios up on there and a lot of my products. That's about it. Right on. Okay, well, mahalo to all of you for being a part of the Moana Nui podcast today. Yeah. It is always exciting when I can really have the true people, you know, people who share my culture um, on the show, um, especially to have so many of you who are just, I just I respect a lot of you and the work that you do. Even you too, Mokihana, coming up in, for the next generation. Mahalo Nui um, for, you know, accepting the call. Uh, to be a part of this community. Um, thank you so much. Uh, you can, we are here on the Moana Nui podcast. We stream every Thursday evening um, at 7 and 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we have a number of different series. We have um, an indie projects spotlight uh, called Malachi's Corner, where he talks about his favorite um, indie projects on Kickstarter. We have um, a mental health series for those, you know, a lot of creatives that's, there's a lot of struggles um, in folks that I've talked to. Um, so we created a mental health series where we talk about different right. topics um, and helping people to cope appropriately, especially now given with COVID and, you know, the different challenges that are, you know, piling upon the, the regular life challenges that we already have. Um, and, Starting this month on March 17th, we are doing a monthly leadership talent professional development um, series. And this month's topic is going to be on time management, which is important for each and every one of us, whether you're creative or not. How do you successfully and effectively manage your time and keep your work-life balance, um, especially adapting to this new the new normal um but yeah that's that i'm really excited about this one because for communities of color underrepresented communities like there are limited resources and unless we help each other a lot of times we get pushed to the side so that's um one thing that i really wanted to start doing on this podcast is creating professional development opportunities for people outside of even their day job because i i've 
figured out that like a lot of them don't even offer those. So um, hopefully that will be valuable to everyone. We welcome your feedback all the time. If you guys have ideas on topics and things you would like to see us cover on the show, Dana and I, we welcome those. You can email us at Podcast at gmail.com. And we will take that into our planning series um, and figure out how to incorporate it. And if you want to come on and like, like, cause we are now um, allowing people to like the, the leadership thing that I'm doing, I'm not running that, you know, someone else is, we're partnering with someone and they're creating the content. So if you have an idea, Mokihana, you and the, the interns, you know, like, I would love to hear like what, what, what our young generation want to, more from us. Um, so that we can start to create content for you guys too, as well, to help you guys as you are, you know, maturing and finding your way, um, you know, in this community and how we can help you guys be more successful too. So um, a long way to say that we got a lot going on on this podcast. Um, you guys are welcome to be a part of it as much as you would like. Um, we can find us on YouTube, Twitch, and on Facebook. And then um, the audio versions of our podcast are on all of the podcast platforms. So whichever one is your favorite, Google, Apple, whatever, you can find us there as well. All right. I said a whole lot right there. Of course. When I, when I promote. Of course. All you got to do is DM me. Sure. Yes. You know, you get, I told you, you get, get seat over here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I would I would love to have each of you on um, back individually. So we'll follow we'll out about that and figure out how we can get you guys in the lineup. Okay. Mahalo, All right. Mama. We appreciate yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All righty, guys. Take care. Have a good weekend. Get your rest because whew, Monday comes before we know it. So. Uh, Monday. Already. Aloha. Already. Aloha. Yeah. Aloha. So many stories left to tell Even if we have to ourselves Can't keep history on the shelf If they won't tell it, we will If this the land of the free, it was a freedom then When they annexed Hawaii and called it see the lands Without any type of payment and no signing off Called themselves a republic in 1894 1.2 million acres overtaken from the native Hawaiians When they resisted, the West retaliated in violence and erasure The Hawaiian language is banned As part of colonialism's plan to expand, yeah Stuck between a rock and a hard place Multiple bombings of Koholave As a part of their ongoing war with Asia Used it as a place for target practice No consent or compensation Colonizers call for annexation No work out for all the locals School will never let you know So many stories left to tell Even if we have to ourselves can keep history on the shelf If we won't tell it, we will Too many stories left to tell Even if we have to ourselves can keep history on the shelf If we won't tell it, we will We will So if we put Hawaii in a perspective Well, black and Asian history is interconnected Considering the fight with the Pacific then of course, versus Asia, they was treated as a middleman for war But they didn't let the western colorism run its course Cause dark skin was a sign of dignity to call The land was taken in the name of capitalism When prior to it was an actual kingdom Clap back at the system Stuck between a rock and a hard place Multiple bombings of Koholave As a part of their ongoing war with Asia Used it as a place for target practice No consent or compensation Colonizers call for annexation no work out for all the locals, school will never let you know So many stories left to tell, even if we have to ourselves can keep history on the shelf, if we won't tell it, we will So many stories left to tell, even if we have to ourselves can keep history on the shelf, if we won't tell it, we will So many stories left to tell, even if we have to ourselves can keep history on the shelf if if he won't tell it, we will Too many stories left to tell Even if we have to ourselves Can't keep history on the shelf If he won't tell it, we will He will
I'm Steve Bloom. I've been a voice actor for more than 30 years, playing characters like Wolverine, Starscream, Tank Dempsey from Call of Duty. With Bloom Fox Studios, I've learned so much about myself. Learning to breathe, to no fear, to getting ugly in front of the mic. One of the biggest changes I've noticed, at least for me, is how much my confidence level has gone up. I've done an Eastern European video game, an e-commerce commercial, a documentary. If you're thinking about getting into voiceover, just do it. Jump in.